Hey there, welcome to Extra Healthy Ish, the big sister podcast to Healthy Ish. This podcast is from Body and Soul, and I am your host, Felicity Harley. Don't you ever feel like just giving it all up, chucking it in? Well, not all of it. Maybe your career, your job, a relationship, your house, living in the city, moving to the country whatever it is. Well, TV host, journalist and singer Georgie Coughlin jumped off that cliff last year, giving up the enviable gig hosting The Project. Do you remember that? You might have read about it. She was in Stella last year talking about the experience. Well, today she's going to talk even more about the experience. Actually, we had a really great chat. I really enjoyed chatting to her. Today, yes, she talks about digging deep, knowing, you know, that sense of knowing that it was time to move on and having the courage to actually do it. You like this one. Prepared to be inspired. Georgie, thank you so much for joining us on Extra Healthyish. Now, how do you stay extra healthyish in your life? Well, my probably my number one change I've made in the last 12 to 16 months, Felicity, would be no drinking. That's changed my life. Congratulations. I can, I can, thank you. I can be partial and still very much coerced into a glass of Clico and a beautiful oh, French yeah. champagne. I always. Mean, I, 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 always. <laughs> um, but that's been really, that's been a real game changer for me. I did it during the pandemic. We have an 11-year-old who I was homeschooling and we have a hospitality business. So as you can imagine in the pandemic, that has been so stressful. And my husband and I had had nowhere to sort of run within the marriage because it's not as if you were both sitting down on your laptops doing def- different careers and then sort of checking in. It was like, this is our business. This is our team. And at times it was, it was really tough. So I just made a pretty quick decision early on in the pandemic. I need to be mentally fit here. I need to be on my A game. I need to keep this family together. We need to really... I need to bunker down. So I just said, right, no more drinking. I need to get up, meditate and be the best version of myself that I can be for me and for my family. So that was just so addictive. The clarity was addictive. I feel so great. So that's continued, which is really lovely. And the other things I I would say for me, are key pillars of my health would be meditation every day, ideally morning and night. Sometimes I'm going to be a bit slack and sort of get to the end of the day. How 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 long do you do it for? Look, it does depend on my mental state. If I'm really anxious about something, I'll do a guided deep. I have Chopra, Deepak Chopra's app. I love it. I do a 16 minute one, but if I'm still really flighty and I'm still really up and I can't ground myself, I would then probably do another 10 in the morning. It just depends sort of on my, how my body's feeling. And then other days I'm just so chilled and grounded and been out in the garden that I start it within five minutes and we'll fall asleep <laughs> at night. So, but I really use it religiously. It, it has enormous health, mental health benefits for me. And yeah, meditation and moving my body. So I'm into my running and we're on a farm here. So a couple, few, about three or four years ago, I purchased a, a treadmill on sale and that's been a game changer as well. So, so you, run, out. you run outside or on the treadmill? I run Around on the treadmill. Farm. Well, no, I just, yeah, just yeah. On the, in the shed. Right. So it can be, Ballarat has really cold weather, so it's not motivating to go out in the middle of winter. Fair enough, here. yes. <laughs> so I needed as much help as I could get Felicity to get out there. So I put my little podcast in and I'm out in the shed, whether it's freezing cold or whether it's stinking hot. And it also means that if Simon's got, go, he loves to cycle. So if he likes to go out early, there's not really a compromise where I have to say, oh, well, I can't go because she's just sleeping in here. I can I'm literally next door in the shed running. You've got it sorted. So that, yeah, that's been really great. And mentally nothing else. I do a bit of yoga as well, just a 10 minute program on YouTube. Um, and that just gets my body flowing. And, but I'm really getting addicted to meditation and movement in the morning. Just setting up your day right. If you win the morning, what's the saying? Win the morning, win the day. It is so true because otherwise I just cat- I feel like I'm running otherwise. And I also have this, I know it's weird, but I have this sort of level of slight shame too when I keep pressing keep pressing snooze and then I'm running late. I get really annoyed with myself. I'm like, why didn't I just get up? And I also think there's nothing, there's something magical about getting up at sunrise. It's yeah, like- absolutely. It's such a beautiful reminder that every day is a new chance to start again. When that sun comes up, it's like Earth is saying, here we go, like it's a new day. You can start again. Forget about what happened yesterday. So I'm trying to go to bed earlier as well and get up earlier and 
and self journal. I'm finding self journaling really powerful for my mental state as well. Sounds like you are living a very healthy, extra healthy ish life there. (laughs) (laughs) Trying, trying Felicity. We'll be back after this short break with more from Georgie. Now let's talk about, well, quitting the project and fresh starts and, you know, at this time of year we all need a bit of inspiration and I thought you were perfect for it. Talk us through, just briefly for those who didn't listen to Healthy-ish, the process of coming to this decision of jumping off the cliff, of quitting that amazing, and I probably shouldn't say that, much coveted TV gig, right? (laughs) Well, it is an amazing show though. It honestly is and and I never took it for granted and, you you know, I think you're being authentic. you know, it's only four people on a desk on a national TV show. So it was something I always went with such gratitude that I was part of it. It was really special. It does look but like was... you're having lots of fun when you're on there. I do. Oh, it's the best. Yes. <laughs> it was just the best job. And that's why it was such a hard decision because there was that question of what if something like this never comes up again? But, of course, as we all know, you can't think like that. Um, you need to assess why you're leaving. And I just looked at my values. I looked at courage is one of my values. I looked at growth and I thought, am I still growing? Am I still moving forward with where I want to go spiritually, mentally, intellectually? And I, I just did come to the answer that after 11 years, I needed something new. And I just needed to know what else was in store for me as a person who is so interested in creative projects, so interested in helping other, particularly I'm interested in helping other women and healing music, using my voice. So all those, it was, you know, it was six months of back and forth and back and forth. And then also I suppose I registered my joy, almost like a little joy meter. And after I'd finished a few shows, I was a bit like, well, I think I've, I think maybe that has decreased. So maybe I need to honour myself and jump off the cliff. And I love jumping off the cliff. I do love that free fall. I just find that really exciting. And so I went with that. I think a lot of people would identify with you. You know, we all get to that point where we're like, okay, it, when do I end this? Is it now? Is it, you know, in a couple of years? And how can we get better at, you know, jumping off that cliff? Because often it's easy just to sit on that cliff for many, many years because mm. life is good. How, how do we yes. actually make it happen? For me, it was the question of do I want to be part of this decision as well? Or will the decision be made for me? I mean, will the show be around in two years? I know I'm sure it will be, but maybe there's a bit of just autonomy of your own life. So maybe it's about checking in and saying to yourself, do you still want to be the the person who's making this decision or, or ultimately are you leaving it up to other people like with a relationship or a job? You know, if you're worried that your management team I don't know, it's hard because when it is fun and stable and fabulous, I spoke to a lady yesterday and she's been the same job for 10 years and I said, to, and she sort of was saying to me, oh, it's 10 years, like should I go? I said, well, I don't know. Is it still serving you? Is it serving you and your truth? And she said, it really is. And I said, well, why would you leave? So I think there are people that can stay in jobs for 20, 30 years and be really happily married for a long time because they grow, they evolve, they adjust, but ultimately it's still serving their values and their needs. So I'd probably be reluctant to say, you know, you have to jump off the cliff because for some people that would be just so disastrously anxious ridden and it would be detrimental, I think. So it does depend on your personality type maybe. Yeah, yeah, good answer. And also I think, you know, deep down you know whether you're ready and it's really just asking yourself those hard questions should I Mm -hmm. should I actually stay am I fine yeah I'm fine well why am I worrying about jumping off a cliff no I do know I need to actually do this and it's going to be awful you're going to have to sit with uncertainty I'm going to have this range of emotions that I do not like but I'm going to have to embrace them anyway absolutely and and just ask yourself is there any part of myself that is in denial because gosh, denial is powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Like denial has so much strength. And you watch friends in denial in quite toxic relationships. Denial is so powerful. So that's just, that's only a question that you can answer. Am I in denial? No. If you do a big scan or if you sort of go, I don't even want to go there, well, you're probably in denial. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that just comes from sitting with your own thoughts and feelings, emotions, journaling as you do, or talking to friends. Actually, The other thing that I read in your recent interview with Stella while you won last year is that you said singing was the biggest thing on your vision board. Talk us through, you're you're obviously a vision boarder. Um, 
talk us through the importance of this, well, creating a vision board and, and this singing thing. And this is obviously a passion. And how did you kind of come to realize this and want to do more of it, I suppose? Okay. Well, two things. The vision board is a massive part of my life. Always sort of has been, but I've probably been a bit stricter with it. And my wonderful Instagram followers are going to be so annoyed with me because I've promised to put my vision board up, which I do promise I will do in the next week. Have I you promise. done it they kept, for 2022? They kept to me. I've, I've sort of, I've got, I should have taken a photo and said to you, I've got a pile of crap in front of it, Felicity. Like I've got it all done, but it needs to be refreshed because as you tick things off, and also as you change in life, you tend to go, actually, I don't, I don't want that anymore. Yeah. I don't really think I need to go down It's a bit of a moving anymore. feast, isn't it? It's just really fun because you sort of get excited because you think, oh, I'm going to take that off and that space for something else. I've always been a vision person and some people might have a vision, like some people have a vision board on their phone. And what that means is they've taken shots, screenshots. And if you scroll, th scroll through your screenshots of a year and a half ago, and then you see things that you did or that you achieved or it could be anything like it could be um, something physical or it could be a mantra that you related to. It's really interesting just to, to look and go, actually, I did implement that in my life. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, actually, I wrote a story a couple of years ago and they call it the nectar list. It's psychologists call it, And what it is, a nectar list is, well, they, so some psychologists recommend you should do it at the end of every year where you just sit down and focus on the past year and all the things that you achieved that you were really proud of or you know, I love and that. And so you just sit down and do your nectar list and that kind of gets – you clear or provides clarity before you look at the year ahead. I love that. Well, I've probably done a nectar list um, in a more relaxed way that that's exactly what I did over at the holidays when I was down the coast is I just flicked back over my phone and I'd taken screenshots of, you know, two years ago of these beautiful stables and now we've built them here on the farm. And I had that real moment of like, wow, like we've done that. That's amazing. Like good on us, you know, and I did literally that and thought, just gave myself a bit of pat on the back and self-kindness and thought, that's powerful. That's really powerful to sit in that. So my vision board is really important. It's not just photos. It's not things. Yes, there is like there was a new saddle on there and the other day I was lucky enough to save up for a new saddle. So I like scrunched that up. And went, yes, <laughs> I've got it. First, the first saddle in 25 years that I've bought for myself and that was a real sense of achievement. But there are, most of them are just words. So they're things like for me, my husband Simon, it's Simon and I to become closer and each year more connected uh, Molly and I to do a long horse ride together in Margaret River um, to sing more um, to I've got some really big 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 stuff up there like in terms of um, massive dreams that I've had for a long time and then you have sometimes words or I've got photos of my girlfriends from year seven and written come you know keep these beautiful nourishing relationships alive and, and keep just a reminder to never take that for granted and to keep working on those relationships, to keep making the effort to call. So it's not just all stuff. It's a lot of it is spiritual for me. And it just, I suppose, is almost like a little, I have it up in my bedroom so when I get up in the morning I can see it. I don't have it tucked away because otherwise I sort of forget about it. And I might have a photo of like a beautiful landscape area that I might want to do at the farm or an idea I might have for our, our boutique hotel or our restaurant or something, I might have like a picture up there um, and I might have an ultimate, you know, staff structure because at the moment we can't get any staff oh, in hospitality. No. So I might have an ultimate staff structure that, that I'm sort of, that's my goal, that's our manifestation. So, yeah, it's a really eclectic mix and I do refresh it, re review it all the time. And I think and there's something powerful about seeing it every day to remind you of this absolutely. is what I'm aiming for and this is what I want. Well, I am a visual learner too. So for, for other people that might be more of a mental thing or they might write down things, but I'm, I've always been a visual learner so and a visual person. So, yeah, I get up and it just recalibrates me every day. And, I mean, sometimes you get up and you're absolutely knackered. So you look at it and you go, oh, my God, I don't even want to think about that today. <laughs> and then other days you get up punching the air going, yes, I'm going to focus on that. So, yeah, I would... It really works for me. I love it. Now, what was the second part of your question? I can't it remember. was about well, you're singing. So you, the singing is obviously oh, yes. this. You know, you're 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 on the mask singer, mask singer live shows. I read maybe this year. What's what's in store for the singing side of Georgie? Well, I think it was doing the mask singer. Obviously, whenever you get to perform, you're reminded of that joy. But it really was the mask singer because no one else could see me, and I was inside Monster. It was this beautiful little bubble where I could be me, 
you guys couldn't see me closing my eyes and really focusing on the the singing and I just was just reminded of how much it brings me joy. Even the rehearsals, I'd walk out and I kept texting my husband because the only people that knew were my husband and my manager going, this is the best job in the world. So it was, it was sort of that really, that was a bit of a turning point. It was like, come on, I'm 45. I got to do this more and have beautiful support from all my friends and family, of course. But then it's your new people in your life. Like I'm really, you know, Peter Halley is a dear friend. Well, and they're all like, why are you doing this more? And I was like, yeah, I know. I probably need to. And it's only been that I've probably just been so busy and lucky with all this other stuff that's happened in my life. It hasn't been that I've been avoiding it or anything that I've probably got the time now to go. Yeah, actually I will do that. And so I quit the project, said that. And then I got the call to do Channel 9 Carols by Candlelight, which was just so serendipitous after what I'd put out on my vision board. And I'd always want to do carols again. And when I got the call, I just sort of looked up into the air and thanks universe. Like that's, that's beautiful. And I was so grateful to do it. And that just reminded me of how much I love it. So yeah, I'm writing another show and that will, depending on COVID, of course, so I'll push ahead and see what happens. That'll be really fun. Cause I, I just, I love it. I just love connecting with audiences through song. Well, Georgie, thank you so much for, well, coming on and connecting with the extra healthy-ish audience. And it was lovely to hear <laughs> your well, passion for singing and watch this space. Hey, in 2022. Thank you so much for having me, Felicity. Thanks for listening to this chat with Georgie. She gave loads of little nuggets of wisdom, the vision board, getting out there and just the neutrality thing. I really like that. Just being okay with where you are at right now. Now, if you want more from Georgie, I hope you've listened to her on Healthish. That's our really short podcast that's out daily, Monday to Friday. If you want other episodes of Healthish or Extra Healthish, you can check out those or jump on to bodyandsoul.com.au. Thanks again for listening to my chat with Georgie. And if you have a moment, we'd be so grateful if you could rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. And until tomorrow, stay extra healthy-ish.